I think it's important to um, to state before we go any further that consciousness, however read, is not something that you can know of something else. Um, I mean, you know, common sense tells you that, that, that is true, but it's also mathematically true um, under the free energy principle in the sense that the only things you can read about the internal machinations of an agent uh, are exposed on their Markov blanket or on their, um, more specifically, the states act upon the world because you are part of the world from the point of view of the agent. So you can only ever infer something is conscious um, and that requires the observer so what I'm doing is, is developing a very observational relational um, position just to acknowledge you, you will never know um, which is going to be interesting in relation to machine consciousness um, so for, for, that, that, that means that uh, you know you, the observer has to have the fantasy, the hypothesis, the construct as part of their explanatory repertoire to make the inference that this thing, i.e. you, is conscious. So that puts a special, uh, if you like, or it contextualizes, I think, discussions about consciousness. Only conscious artifacts can ever recognize consciousness in another. And that recognition is just another act of intelligence. It's just an act of inference. It's an explanation. You know, this explanation that this thing is conscious in the sense that I am conscious is a good enough explanation to explain all the observable behavior. So um, there is no ground truth here. And I think that sort of takes up a lot of pressure of what could become quite toxic arguments in certainly machine consciousness and machine welfare. You cannot adopt a fundamentalist position on consciousness because by definition, you will never know. But it also um, means that these debates about machine consciousness or aspirations to build or discussions about could one build machine consciousness can only be had by people who um, subscribe to the notion that consciousness is a suitable fantasy or hypothesis to explain certain kinds of self-organization. Um, just to pick up um, and reinforce or reiterate a, a, a couple of key points. Um, so the first is um, this acknowledgement that we are using homology as the basis of the evidence that we ass assimilate when making a decision about whether you or some artifact is, is conscious. Uh, Mark articulated that in terms of the scientific process. He deferred to Popper. Not everybody would, um, but he did, and that's perfectly fine. Um, and that's exactly what I meant, but that consciousness is something you infer about something. It's it's an act of measurement. It's an observation that entails a degree of, of inference. And of course, that means there has to be evidence for that inference. And I think this is going to be practically relevant when we come to machine consciousness, because you're going to, you know, people like uh, Joshua Back are asking, you know, what kind of um, evidence-based approaches should we take to this artifact to say whether it is conscious or not? Um, so this is a really important question. I think Mark has very elegantly just sort of um, framed that as the as the key issue. Uh, and he, I repeat, articulated in terms of Popperian scientific uh, inference or hypothesis testing. And that's exactly what I meant um, 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 in terms of um, inferring something is conscious. And then what he went on to say was, well, OK, we can certainly use structural anatomical homology as one source of evidence. So if I were able to breach your Markov blanket and look inside, say, unfortunately, you had died and I was able to dissect you. Um, and I can look at the structure of your brain and I can certainly find those sources of, sources of ascending uh, classical neuromodulatory systems you know, around the base of your brain that are those that machinery, that part of your anatomy um, that is necessary to support feeling. Um, and I could infer, even though you are no longer conscious because you're dead, because I've broken your Markov blanket by literally slicing into your brain, um, then I could infer that you were conscious simply on that structural homology. 
Um, could I apply that to a zebrafish? Well, to a certain extent we can, because we can actually image the neuronal circuitry at least and, and look at the common homologies. And you may argue from the point of origin of life, there are lots of different um, structural chemical um, 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 homologies that one might, you know, one might appeal to as sources of evidence to make an inference, a best guess, is this thing conscious or not? Um, and of course, what you're saying is if it's sufficiently like me, It's conscious, um, and the more that homology is broken, and the further you wander away from zebrafish down to viruses, um, the the, uh, the less you can rely upon that homology. And then what Mark said, okay, well, are there other criteria? Because it's if I do, uh, if I dissect my personal computer, I am not going to find these things. It just doesn't have the right anatomy. It doesn't have the right architecture, which may tell you that my PC will never be conscious, but. Let's just pursue the argument. But there may be some other homology there, which was a functional one. And I think that's, you know, is that true? Um, can you ever have a divorce between the anatomy and the function? Can you have a divorce between the structure and the function, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the dynamics on the structure? Um, I would actually argue you can't. Um, so I don't think this is a disagreement, but it's a particularly strong position, which I'm not let's say I'm not necessarily committed to. But I would certainly argue, um, say, if I was Ross Ashby, and or indeed Carl Friston, as you know, the author of the Free Energy Principle, um, I would argue that the anatomy is the substrate that embodies or entails the function. So this is the good regulator theorem. It's also Um, appears again and again in the context of the free energy principle that we install the cause effect structure of our lived world into our anatomy so that it has a hierarchy so that that, that reflects for example the scale invariance and the hierarchical composition of things that generate our sensorium um, it has a separation of temporal scales it has dynamics uh, it has uh, and so on and so forth and there are lots of if you like uh, um, aspects of the anatomy that um, are um, tie you down to a particular physiology that tie you down to a particular functionality and in many respects most of the theories that attend the free energy principle um, are about that so is my brain a predictive coding machine You know, does it work um, like a camera filter? Or is it a belief propagation machine? Does it work like a uh, message passing on a factograph? Both are quite plausible um, hypotheses that specify a particular anatomy, a particular connectivity, a particular structure. So from that point of view, what we are saying then is if we are looking at homologies and both the functional and the anatomy um, both are basically two sides of the same coin uh, two sides of the same coin then the inference that something is conscious is only by homology which just means that you can only be conscious if you're sufficiently like me which means you will not be able to recognize consciousness in any other kind of artifact or any other space time scale and i think that's important from machine consciousness point of view because you cannot now make consciousness in a machine that does not look like me so now what you're saying is you have to um, turn to mortal computation substrate dependent computation before you can build an artifact that's going to pass the Turing test, uh, Turing test of, of consciousness, because it has to have that homology. It has to have the same anatomy, the same computational anatomy, the same functional anatomy, the functional architecture as me, because that's the only source of evidence. Why is it the only source of evidence? Because it's only me that has feelings. So yeah, if this thing has feelings, it has to be like me. And I think that's important you know, to say out loud When it comes to questions about consciousness, that tells you two things. that Machine consciousness is only going to be emergent when it's um, um, evinced in transaction with other things that are conscious, namely people. And it's going to have to have some mortal aspect to it and possibly anthropomorphic structural aspect to it as well. Um, but certainly the transactional aspect, the relational, the observational aspect is, going, is, is, is quite important. So you're not going to find consciousness on the edge.
You're not going to find it in supercomputers. You're not going to find it, um, you could even argue, on von Neumann architectures. Um, simply for just extending and formalizing the you know, the the, uh, the truisms that Mark was just articulating, which all rest upon homology, is this thing like me?